having said that, I would like to move into my sermon. The title of my sermon is on the screen. It is very well known uh, topic to all of us. We might have studied several times and more than what we studied, is we might have prayed this so many times. So I would like to talk about the Lord's Prayer and I'm um, thinking of uh, uh, speaking from this uh, series of messages uh, so that we can uh, give a uh, uh, deep look into the prayer that ha that Jesus has taught us and uh, he asked us uh, to pray in this manner. As I told, it is well-known prayer to all of us. We pray this prayer too much, but we ponder too little. Okay. And uh, for some, it is uh, as mystical, it is a mystical experience as if the words themselves hold a special sway with God, as they say these words in the prayer. And for some others, its, uh, its statements are spoken out of a habit or out of obligation without attaching any meaning to it. Right? So there is a discussion all over the world uh, when, when we talk about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, some people say we have to pray this prayer because Jesus taught us to pray. So every time uh, we have prayers and all, we have to pray this. And uh, some say, no, we don't need to pray this prayer just uh, uh, like, you know, without any meaning. We have to pray this prayer with a meaning. And it is just a model that Jesus has shown us. He never asked us to pray the same prayer. But still, uh, we all can re recognize and relate to it. Many of us, we feel the kind of mystical connection to it. And for some, it is just uh, a ritual or a habit to uh, do the prayer. But in Matthew chapter 6, in the same Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, Jesus says uh, uh, that, and when you, when you pray, do not keep up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. So uh, this supports us that even if you pray this prayer just, uh, just uh, as a formality or a habit, uh, and if we pray that, it, it is not going to count anything. It is not going to make any profit to us. And Jesus himself was discouraging us from doing this prayer. So it is always important for us to uh, understand the meaning of this prayer and the more, when we call it the model of prayer that Jesus taught us, so it is very important for us to ponder on this prayer and understand uh, the, the intensity and the depth of each and every word that has been said in this prayer. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to try to ponder and understand what Jesus was trying to tell us and what this Lord's Prayer teaches us in our life. And uh, that's what we are going to do. So before we do that, there are a few things we need to recognize. This prayer, it came from it came directly from Jesus' own life of prayer. If we read this prayer from the book of Luke, we understand the disciples came to Jesus and asked him to teach, teach them how to pray. And that they have done after seeing Jesus praying for the whole night. Jesus prayed for the whole night and morning he met his disciples and they asked him, teach us to pray because they have seen the great prayer that Jesus was doing and they were inspired by his prayer life. And so we can understand uh, this prayer is something that came directly out of the, uh, the prayer life of Jesus himself. And another thing we can notice from here is the disciples request itself is the answer for Jesus prayer for the whole night. Jesus prayed whole night and then morning Jesus' disciples came. We can understand it, it can be a result of his own prayer. He wanted his disciples to be connected to his father. He wanted to reveal his father to the disciples. He wanted that they should understand who he is and who their father is and so that they may enter into the relationship with him and continue the prayer of life and grow in intimacy with the Lord. He wanted that from very deep within. And in fact, the very purpose Jesus came into this world is to reveal the father, right? To show us the father and to send us the spirit. So it is part, his prayer is also part of it. So it tells that the disciples having a desire to pray itself is the answered prayer of Jesus himself. And if you and I have the desired such kind of intentions um, in, within us, 
let us let me remind you this is the work of god and this is something that jesus desires from you and me and he wants us to pray and this prayer it summed up all the prayers of jesus and the uh, jesus attitude of prayer in these words uh, vijayana can you please reduce this we could yeah this prayer this prayer itself it sums up all the prayers that jesus made his perspective towards prayer all the desires he has and it expresses his attitude towards prayer also so it is very important for us to understand this prayer on a basically on outward look we can see this prayer in this manner the lord's prayer it opens with addressing god as a father who is in heaven and then the next uh, the next um, we can find we can find the request is related to so, sorry next we can find worshiping the lord and that's why he said uh, your name should be hallowed hallowed be thy name and then we can find four concerns or four needs of man in a comprehensive manner jesus explains the first one is the physical need he, where he says give us our daily bread which is related to the physical needs of humans and then it also is speaking about the mental needs that's why he where he, he taught us to pray lead us not into temptation which is talking about mental needs of humanity with so that we may not be mentally led by any temptation or given ourselves into any temptation and then he also spoke about the spiritual needs in this prayer where he said uh, deliver us from the evil one and um, at last he shows the relational needs of humans where he spoke about forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us in this prayer he has shown in a comprehensive manner four need four essential needs of all humans and he addressed them which we are going to study in the later uh, as as part of the series but however we see that he addressed the father and next we can see uh, he worshiped the father and then he spoke he prayed for the four essential needs of humanity okay having said that let us go today let us go into the sermon today we are not going to talk about all these subjects but we are going to focus on the first uh, few words of this prayer okay the first few uh, sorry the prayer concluded with doxology uh, doxology means praising god again so we are going to focus more on the first few words of this prayer uh, in english we read as father who art in heaven in greek uh, it is pater himon holon tons uh, orenios this is a greek word uh, the reason i put there is how jesus to show you how jesus started what is the first word he has spoken in english we started with our father who art in heaven but as jesus started he started his prayer with very single word father and he took a break and then he spoke the rest of the things okay so first word as jesus was praying used was father the jewish people were not used to this word especially when it comes in addressing to god they address god as lord they address god as master they address him as god you know they don't even write the name of god we call l o in, in english bible we find capital l o r d they don't write the name they they write l and give a gap and d okay so such a reverence they give to god and uh, in giving such rever reverence what they have done is this they step themselves away from god you know god you are holy you are great high and you be there and we are here one example we can see in book of uh, exodus when god came down to mountain and they have seen the thunders and they were frightened and what did they tell moses oh he is very holy it is very difficult for us to deal with him moses you go and talk to him and tell us will do it right they themselves have separated or distanced themselves from god out of the reverence and it is good to have such reverence but here comes jesus he brings a revolutionary uh, teaching to the humanity it is it is uh, in fact uh, uh, what we can say uh, offensive 
to the Jewish community when Jesus spelled the word Father. Just imagine, how do you relate to your father? Okay, this prayer reveals the kind of uh, relationship that Jesus has with his father. How do you go and talk to your father? Do you talk to your father like this? Hello, fa uh, hey father, you who, uh, you who are excellent in economics and have developed the lives of thousands of people and have, become, have made and raised so many leaders who have become the backbone of this country's economy. Do you speak like, to your, like that to your father if your father is an economist or economics professor? Huh? Or do you say, dad? <laughs> How are we praying? I don't mean we should not use those words. It is good to use that great words to God. But let us look at the words of Jesus where he was focusing. Jesus knows much better and much better names of God than any of us. And he did not use him. Oh God, you created this heaven and earth and who brought the life into this world and have created humans and sustaining them. Because sustaining the trees, the animals, plants, fishes, and have given us the uh, oil, uh, sorry, the oxygen freely. No, he didn't tell any of that. His prayer just reflects the sheer and pure relationship, the intimate relationship he has with the Father. He just called him Father. I would like to ask you to think about it. And he constantly, but yeah, this would be at the same time, with along with this prayer, he was constantly revealing his relationship uh, with the father. As a child, he revealed his relationship with the father at Jerusalem. You know, you all know this incident very well. Uh, as Jesus was, as Mary and uh, Joseph lost Jesus in her journey, and they have found, and they said they came to him and asked him, "What are you doing?" And he said, "Don't you know I am in my father's business?" And funniest thing is this, if you read book of Luke chapter 2, there it is written, they did not understand anything. It is written, Jesus said, don't you know I'm in my father's business? They didn't understand. And not only that, he revealed himself as the son of God to the disciple in Matthew chapter 14. We can find the incident where Jesus was calming the sea. Jesus walked on the sea and then the moment he entered into the boat, what did disciples say? Deeper the disciples said, Truly, you are the son of God. And that's what disciples said. And when it comes to Matthew chapter 16, when he asked, who do you say that I am? Nobody answered except Peter saying, you are the son of God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood, blood did not reveal to you, but my father who is in heaven. Do you think disciples understood here? Not it. That's why in John chapter 14, we find uh, when Jesus says, I'm going to the father, Philip comes and asks, shows the father. Because he did not understand what does this son of God means. They just got, Jesus was constantly saying, father, father, father. And in John, he prays and says, you know, I have revealed your name to them. What name did Jesus reveal to the children, disciples? Is it Elohim? El Shaddai? Elohim, or any other names? Nothing. Father. But did the disciples understood? No. They didn't understand. That's why they said, show us the Father. Then Jesus says, Philip, you have with me this law. I'm not talking about Nelson Philip or any other Philips, but the disciple Philip. You were with me for this long, haven't you? Understand yet. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He was constantly talking about the, the intimate relationship he has with the Father. But unfortunately, neither his mom nor his disciples understood it. And some, it's so unfortunate. Sometimes we have the doctrine of uh, Trinity and Son of God. We say Jesus is Son of God. And sometimes we ourselves may not understand it properly. It is because... Not it is not just because it is intellectually too high to understand, but it is intellectual sorry relationally too simple to understand. We could not understand it because of that very reason. We are not able to see things relationally. 
Okay. That's what it says when Jesus said, Father. And in fact, Jesus used the word Father in the same Matthew chapter 5, uh, in, in, in uh, Sermon on the Mount, you know, 5, 6, 7. In these three chapters, he used this word 17 times. And uh, we can see the intensity of the usage of this word. But the disciples and the mother, his mother also did not understand. It is because the Jewish people, they have their own understanding of the word Son of God. When we use the word son of God, it was talking about a special relationship uh, who, what people have with God. Just, just like a, uh, it is like a God, someone being chosen by God and just like how God has chosen Israel. One surprising thing we feel we, we need to see in Exodus chapter 4, we find um, where, uh, where God tells Moses, go and tell um, Pharaoh, that you send my children, my, my people, so you send Israelites so that they may worship me in uh, wilderness. Then he tells Moses, Israel is my firstborn. If Israel is the firstborn of God, who are you and me? If Israel is the firstborn, who are you and me? Nothing but the secondborn. Simple. That's why he used the word first. Okay? If first, he used the first means there are some others. Next is there. First, first always speaks about next. So you are the next one. So that's what it, it is about. But they did not understand. However, the word Israel, the word son of God means to them is someone who has special relationship with God like Abraham, Jacob and uh, um, you know Isaac, David, or anyone, and someone who was chosen specially, like Israel, who was chosen, okay, and uh, it's someone who is Messiah himself, and at last, uh, it is referring to Adam. But one good thing we understand from all these kind of expressions and understandings of Son of God is, all these understandings of Son of God are fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is someone who is who has an in unique relationship no one else has he is the only begotten of the father and then he is the chosen of god he was chosen even before the creation of the world and he is the messiah and he is the second adam just like adam so we, all these expressions they clearly speak about the son of god which which are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So when Jesus said, Father, it is come, it is talking about his intimate relationship that he has with the Father. And then we'll go to the next word that is added, that is our Father, calling him as our Father. How can somebody become the Son of God apart from Jesus? And we can find in Bible, Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 and 45, where it said, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Jesus said, go and forgive your enemies, then you will become the sons of God, your father, your God, your father in heaven. Is it easy to us? It is, in fact, very difficult for us to accept and to do that to, so that we can become the sons of God. And let me tell you, the sermon, we, the moment we find verses in the Sermon on the Mount, we think that, oh, we need to follow each and every word that was spoken in the Sermon on the Mount so that we may be acceptable in Jesus' sight. Jesus has raised and set high standards for morality and ethics, and we should be conformed to that. That's what we think. But let me tell you, my brethren, the Sermon on the Mount was not given to us so that we may obey and become righteous and be acceptable in the sight of God. But the Sermon on the Mount was given to prove was that we are not able to uh, raise ourselves to the standards of God and we may realize that we need a savior who can save us and we may look unto Jesus. It is not to obey and become righteous, but to understand we are totally lost and we may, we may find help from Jesus. 
that is the purpose of the sermon on the mount so according to that only these words is also go and love your enemies is not something that we can do by ourselves which but which we can do once the spirit of god comes within us so here he did we understand we cannot become children of god by ourselves and uh, but we can become children of god by putting our faith in jesus christ john chapter 1 verse 12 says uh, whoever believed in him he had given the right to become the children of god by faith we have become the children of god it is not by any of our works it is completely by the grace of god through faith and ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 says in we uh, here it is speaking about um children of god many a times we think we christians only are the children of god am i right we call we call ourselves only children of god others no they are not children of god why because the scripture said whoever believed in him he had given the right to become the children of god they did not believe yet so they did, they are not the children of god yet okay is becoming children is something that you and i choose let me ask you this question did you choose to become the child of your father or mother no we don't have any choice in that we cannot choose that it is our father and mother who brought us into this world in fact they chose us to be their, their children okay so uh, even it talk when we talk about the children of god also it is not just by our faith we are becoming children of god it is by our work but it is the work of god it is not by us that's why we uh, we need to be humbled uh, to realize that we are not better than anyone else okay so are we the only children of god no if we read book of ephesians chapter 2 or 2 we understand in which you were once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who works in the sons of disobedience who are the sons of disobedience people who are outside the church that disobedient but still they are sons that is why we read the first words in matthew when jesus said father he shines his son a son he, he father's son it rises over the good and the evil he sends his rain on both good and evil he doesn't show any discrimination when god himself is not showing discrimination why should we do that let us realize all others all our children of god and we are someone we realized his voice and desired to be obedient to his voice that's all but all our children of god it is the choice god made and the same thing was repeated in ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 and colossians chapter 3 verse 6 also and ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 it says that it is completely the work of god which has been accomplished in jesus christ that's why it is written having predestined to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable uh, uh, accepted in the beloved you and i have become the children of god in jesus christ according to god's desire not by not by your and my desire oh i wanted to become the children of god so i become i believe in him and i became that is false it is god who desired to make you and i as his children that's why we became and he did that in jesus christ and none of us have done anything to become children of god since it is the work of god in jesus and jesus taught us to call god as our father he re- he no realize that he knows that you and i are children of god and that's why he is continuously from beginning of his ministry and in fact not in even in ministry from beginning of his life from his childhood he is teaching us call god as our father our father in the beginning we read in the Luke chapter 2 he said don't you know that i am in my father's business what did he tell about talking tell about fasting and praying if you're fasting and praying don't show don't do any show off go lock yourself in your room and then your father who hears you in uh, personally and rewards you openly whose father your father and here he is telling us our father he from the beginning he wanted to teach us and tell us to call 
God as our father because he realized he accepted you and I as his children. And he is connecting us to our father. So when Jesus taught us to call God as our father, what is he doing? He is, he is sharing us the very relationship he has with his father. How someone can share the relationship they have with somebody? I was just wondering when I, one example was, uh, just one example came into my mind. It was a few years ago. Uh, I visited my sister's place where uh, uh, my sister's children were very small and they have some friends around also. So my sister's uh, daughter, she came and jumped on me and was playing with me one evening and uh, her friend was next to her. Okay, so as soon as she saw my sister's daughter jumping on me, and this small girl also, she started jumping on me, and she also started playing. Have, have you experienced any of such? Huh? Yeah, and uh, they, they played with me for a while and they left. And I was just wondering, this girl does not know me, and I, didn't, I don't know her either. How could she take the liberty to come and jump on me and play with me and to do all sorts of funny stuff the answer is very simple she doesn't know me but she knows my sister's daughter it is the same to us jesus we don't know father yet we knew jesus that's why with confidence we can go to the father that's how we are adapted adopted adopted Okay, these two words are quite confusing. Okay, Ad adop adopted. Okay, uh, so God adopted us to be his children through his son, Jesus Christ. And that is the same thing Jesus was doing. What Jesus is doing, he's sharing his relationship that he has with father with us. Just like my sister's daughter shared the relationship she has with me, with her friend. So let us be confident. And go to the throne of God. In fact, a better word I can say is, let us be confident, go and sit on the lap of God. Because he loves us and accepted us just as his beloved son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is inviting us into the intimacy with the Father. That is the reason he is teaching us our Father. Okay, He said, pray in this manner. In other words, address God like this, our Father. Rather than calling, oh, most excellent economists in the world, he is calling us to call the Father God as just Father. So he is inviting us into the intimate relationship. And another important thing we can find is Jesus never prayed uh, anywhere, my Father. He prayed Father. He prayed our Father. He did not pray my Father. He is not selfish to keep his Father to himself. Okay, and we do that. I know I've seen when we will go out. Uh, if I get to carry some some other girl, Claire, she, immediately she comes. You know, he's my father. <laughs> he has to carry me only, not others. But Jesus is not like that. He never called only. He never prayed my father only. He prayed our father because he wants to bring us into the intimate circle that he has with the father. That's the very purpose he's doing. So as we pray, we should have this thought. Let us look into these. Okay. And uh, one important thing, let me tell you. Uh, many a times when we pray, we think we are lonely. I'm the only one who is praying. Maybe it is because of our pain and all we feel, right? Have you ever felt somebody else also praying with me? No. We pray. We feel we only are praying. But let me tell you, when we say the moment we say our father, Jesus is praying with us. We are not praying alone. Because we are calling Ava. Ava means not me alone. The father of me and Jesus Christ. That's what we are saying. So the moment we come to the presence of God, we are not praying alone. Jesus, he is praying with us. We are not lonely praying. He is praying with us. Jesus is with us as we pray this prayer. Have you ever thought about this? So I would like to ask you to think about these things intentionally as we pray this prayer. And uh, I would like to go, having said this, I would like to go to my last point and then I will conclude when we talk about our Father. When we pray our Father, 
we are not praying alone, but our fellow brethren are with us as we pray this prayer. Why? We are not calling my father. We are calling our father. Jesus never prayed my father. As you and I pray this prayer, we are not praying my father. The moment we say our father who art in heaven, we are, if we bring the church of Christ, church of God, the brethren, the body of Christ, he is with us as we pray this prayer. Our father, together we are crying unto the Lord. Our father, from the depths of not just one heart, from depths of millions of hearts, this prayer is being addressed to the father. So when we pray this prayer, we are not praying it alone. We are praying along with our brethren. And we can, because we cannot pray this prayer alone, because it is not my father. We are praying this with Jesus and along with the brethren. That's why Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6 says, We have one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, in all. He is the Father of all, not just Christians. He is the Father of all, both obedient and disobedient. He is the Father of both obedient and disobedient children. So the moment we go to the, we, go, we pray this prayer, we are bringing all these people with us and we need, uh, we need to recognize all these humanity is joined with us as we pray this. So what, did, what does it tell us? It tells us, I belong to your family, you belong to my family. And we all belong to the family of God. So that's why we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because we are made one family. There is one family. That's what Bible says. So when we pray this prayer, we are becoming one family. And at the same time, this prayer reminds us to invite others so that as we call the Father, our Father, they too can join us and call Father as our Father. Jesus did that. Jesus didn't like to keep this relationship to himself and calling him my father, but he called you and me and all others and said, come together, let's pray to, the, pray to God and call him our father. He called us, that's why you and I are in that prayer. So it is our duty now, we call others to come and call the father as our father. There are no orphans in the world, that's what we need to tell the world. Come, we have a father, we need to invite them. So this reminds us, that we should bring people into the circle as Jesus brought us into the circle of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what this prayer tells us. Okay. And uh, this is completely, this prayer is completely relational. It speaks about the relationship Jesus has and he shared it with us and we share it with others. So, in conclusion, what I would like to say, number one, when we call, when we start this prayer and call our Father who art in heaven, we, let us be reminded we are made the children of God. So, let us be confident and come to the throne of God. And number two, we are not alone as we pray this prayer. Jesus and our fellow brethren are with us as we call God as our Father. And this prayer reminds us that we all are uh, we all are one big family. I belong to your family, you belong to my family, we all belong to the family of God with one father. And uh, we all are one family, that's what it reminds us. And then it encourages us to share with others the relationship, the re relationship we have with Father, just as Jesus did and encourages to evangelize. That's what the first few words of the Lord's Prayer teach us. So as we conclude, may I, may I ask you to participate with me as we do a small, um, small activity and we close this. We do, we pray this prayer. We pray this prayer together because we are calling out our Father. Shall we all do that? So may I request you to stand on your feet and... Uh, uh, Roshan, can you please put that verse on the screen?
So can I request you to grab the hand of whoever is next to you? Just hold. Just hold uh, someone's hand and contemplate and focus on the word, our Father who art in heaven and what it tells us. Let us be reminded that Jesus had shared his relationship with us. And we are the privileged creatures in this world who could sit along with Jesus and call his father as our father. No one in this world would like to share their relationship with others. But Jesus, he didn't like to keep anything for himself. That is something unique and no one else have. He shared his relationship with us. And uh, as we pray this, Jesus, this moment, he's sitting right, right next to you and standing right next to you. And he is holding your hand. And he's also praying with us. And as we pray this prayer, our brethren, we, ju we just held their hands. We are praying as one big family in this world. The family of God, together we joined our hands now, along with Jesus. And let us pray this prayer and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us forgive our trespasses I will, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, power, glory, forever and ever. Amen.